If you don't teach people and show them from scripture, God has nothing to work with. Because the word of God is the vehicle upon which God can walk on the heart of men. Integrity is simply doing the right thing in the right way at the right time at all times. To succeed in ministry, I need the heart of a shepherd and the mind of a businessman because ministry is business. Hello, tomorrow I'm in Ibadan to go and talk. I'll collect money. Saturday, I'm in a place speaking in the morning. Do school of money in the evening. Sunday morning, I'm in another church in the morning before I come here. 7 a.m. to 10. From there, I come here talking. Is it not the same talking? Hello? Hey, me, I can't do anything. No. All I just know how to do is to cook. Eh? People are cooking and making money. People are cooking and making money. So, people are ignorant of what they have. So ignorance number one, ignorance of who you have. Ignorance number two, ignorance of what you have. Ignorance number three, ignorance of what you can do. Ignorance of what you can do. A lot of people, that's the hey, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Now, when you come to somebody like me to tell me you don't know what to do, the question I ask is, how do you expect me to know what you should do? That thing that I have done that makes you to believe that I should know what you should do, why can't you do it? If it's prayer and praying that I now pray to a level where I can tell you what to do, why don't you pray? If it is fasting and fire, why, why do you need to rely on somebody else to do the job for you? For 38 years, that man was sitting down by the pool. Say, I have no man, no. I don't have connection in Abuja. I don't know any senator. I don't know any house. I don't have anybody to help me. Who told you you need somebody? Eh? How dare you look for a godfather when you have God as your father? God is your father. Yes, you are looking for a godfather. Which other godfather can be greater than the God Almighty? Who is greater than Jehovah Lord Divine? Oh, there is no one greater than Jehovah Lord Divine. Excellent Jehovah. Marvelous Jehovah. There is no one greater than Jehovah, Lord divine. So ignorance of what you can do. I don't know what to do. And that's why you should spend time in a personal retreat. There's a message I've just worked on now. The power of personal retreats, part one and two. The power of personal retreats. Spending time alone with God to discuss the issues of your life. Spending time away from the crowd, away from telephone, away from TV, away from people. You don't need to go to any special mountain. It can be your house. You just lock yourself into and say, today, no television, no telephone. You close everything up and then you spend time with God just to seek his face and hear his voice. So if you don't know what to do, seek the face of God. Number two, seek counsel. Seek counsel. Seek counsel. And please, it's very important for us to begin to note it as we go forward. Counseling is free, but consultancy attracts a fee. Counseling is free, but consultancy attracts a fee. For every voice, there is an invoice. Because let me tell you something. If you really go around now, you will discover that a lot of pastors, a lot of pastors are no more doing counseling. And I understand. A lot of pastors are no more doing counseling because of many reasons. To be a counselor in other developed climes, you will have to have a certificate to counsel. You have to have a certificate. And to have that certificate, you go to school and spend thousands of dollars or pounds. And that's why people are professional counselors. And when you go to them, you have to pay per hour. Now, as a pastor, because 
Freely you have received, freely give. Now, freely receive, freely give is about the call of God and the anointing of God upon our lives. But the counsel you are seeking is not freely receive, freely give. Now, I'm a pastor and then you come to me for marriage counseling. Now, marriage counseling that you are coming to me for, the only reason why I can give you marital counsel is because I spent years doing studies and research in that area through books, tapes, and conferences that cost me money. And then you come for marriage counseling, you take three hours of my time, and I pray for you, and you say thank you. No love offering, no nothing. You are gone. Something that if you are to go to a professional counselor, per hour, they can say 30,000. Now you come to me for financial counsel. I'm a pastor. You have a business problem. You have financial problem. You have problem in your business. That has nothing to do with the anointing. It has a lot to do with what we have got to study. And then we use the anointing and the wisdom of God to corroborate it. Why not go out there to meet a financial counselor or a financial consultant and go and sit down with them and see what will happen? Now, but do you know that as a pastor, we do medical counseling? We will teach you about your health. We do spiritual counseling, marital, all kinds of counseling. We are like seven things to you. And you come free. Say, Pastor, I'd like to see you. There are three things I want to see you for. <laughs> number one, my marriage. Number two, my finances. Number three, my, the, by the time you finish, you have taken relational counsel, you have taken financial counsel, you have taken spiritual counsel, and then when you are going, God bless you, sir. So a lot of pastors have now realized that nobody is a fool. I will preach to you. I'll pray for you. I'll prophesy to you. Fine. Anything after that one. If you don't have enough wisdom to know what to do, me, I have enough wisdom to avoid trouble and avoid the necessary job. Simple. So when people call somebody like me today, I would like to say, so what do you want to see me for? Hello, what do you want to see me for? I want to know eh, it's personal. You are already talking to me. So anything personal that you can't tell me, forget it. So if it's financial, oh, financial, I say, oh, that one is a consultancy issue. Meet me in Nikeja. Meet me in Nikeja. If it's a spiritual issue, oh, wonderful. Every Saturday, the pastors are in church. Meet them for counseling. Or go to Pastor Johnson. You need deliverance. I will, I will tell him before you get there. You don't need to waste my time. Let me be busy doing what. No, I'm telling you. That's why a lot of people are beginning to realize. People are ignorant of what they should do. And if after 35 years of your life, you are so confused, you don't know what to do. And you know that there is a man that can sort you out in 30 minutes. What's your problem? What's your problem? Hello? But people don't value things. And if you don't value me, I value myself. I value myself. That's why you see that to see a lot of people now, they will tell you, oh, sorry, come next week, come next month, come this. You know, some people will call me, they will like to see me, and I'll say, okay, come on Tuesday, or I say, I go to work. What of weekend? Oh, so me, I'm jobless. You go to work. That's how me too, I'm in work. And I say, come and see me in the work. He say, eh, maybe weekend. I say, sorry, I don't work on weekends. He say, me, I work within the week. I say, then forget it. If you are sick, won't you take time off work? If you get case, they call you for court. They subpoena you with letter. You don't go face court. Say, oh, guy, I get case. Oh, if you have a psychological problem or you speak swap, won't you go to a guy and say, sir, I need deliverance. I'm going to see my pastor. I have a problem for the Which or guy? See you. Your staff will come to you and say, good afternoon, I would like to see you. I've been having some psychological and deliverance problem, and I've sought appointment with my pastor for deliverance, and they say I should come on Tuesday from 2 to 4. Ah, bye-bye. Would you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Who wants to carry a demon in the office? But it's because you don't value me, you don't value what I do, that's why you don't think you can leave your work and come and see me. Then me too, I value myself. Cast not your peers before swine. If you don't value me, I value myself. I'm not a useless pastor that will be waiting for somebody to come and kill. I'm not an, a pastor with identity crisis. You know a lot of pastors, they find fulfillment in your problem. So they, their pride is, oh, 72 people came for counseling today. That's their joy. To me, that's nonsense. If you know God for yourself, it saves all of us the problem of useless counseling and 300 people want to see you. They are taking tally number like Odin Days Bank. So ignorance of what? Of what they should do. Number four. The fourth ignorance is ignorance of what they should avoid. Ignorance of what they should avoid. 
a lot of people are ignorant of what they should avoid. And now, let me tell you something. This issue of ignorance, I can spend one year on it. You can see now that there are different room and parlor. I'm just trying to rush because there are seven doors and we are still on number one. What to avoid is part one to seven. What to avoid if you are going to be rich is part one to seven. Just that one point. What to avoid? Avoid waste. Avoid unnecessary expenses. Avoid, you know, is part one to seven. So people don't even know what they should avoid. It is for that reason that a book like School of Money has been written. 700 pages so that everything will be inside one place. You go carry up heavy load. But how many of you have it? Those who have it, how many of you have read it? That's the problem. So, I put it in, t- in, in, in tape, I put it in book, you want me to see, come and be saying it again every time. If I preach the same thing every month, won't you look for another church? Say this, my blessing, you don't get anything to talk again. No. Nobody said to we talk last month. Hello? So people are ignorant of what they should avoid. So because they are ignorant of what they should avoid, they keep doing the same thing that is keeping them poor. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is another definition of insanity. And that's why many people, they have been on the same bus stop, merry-go-round of life. They keep making the same mistake. 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 And finally, because of time, ignorance of wealth creation principles. Ignorance of wealth creation principles. Ignorance of wealth creation. A lot of people don't even know what they need to do to create wealth. They are ignorant of wealth creation principles. Wealth is created. And in order for wealth to be created, anything that is created suggests three things. For something to be created, it means that there is raw materials. For something to be created, it means there is a process. Do you understand? So, for you to say wealth creation, it means there are raw materials that you put together to create the wealth. It means there is a process that you go through and the end result is the wealth. So, when you understand wealth creation principles, you will know what to do, you will start doing it, and you'll be patient to go through the process. Welcome you to Calvary Bible Church. Come for an impartation of wisdom. Every Sundays at 10 a.m. and every Wednesdays at 6 p.m. at End of Anjorin Street, Calvary Bus Stop, Idimu Ikotun Road, Idimu Lagos. It is happening in Calvary. Church with a vision. Calvary Bible Church. The turning point. And that is why, as a pastor, my greatest desire is to see you become what God wants you to become. So I'm going to teach you and teach you and teach you and inform you and inform you and inform you of everything you need to do. And once you get to start doing it, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. But I will not do it, get the results, and come and give you the results without you having to do your own. No, 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 no. Give a man a fish, you feed him for one day. Teach a man to fish, you feed him forever. We are in a generation of fish seekers, not principle seekers. People are looking for fish. They want you to give them money, welfare. They want you to support them. And when you teach them what you have done, that will help them. They don't want that one. They don't. They want you to give them fish. The second door that makes people to be poor that you need to close is the door of laziness. The door of laziness. Don't you know, say, are you lazy? Nobody will tell you I'm lazy. (laughs) Everybody will say, I'm very hard working. The door of what? Do you know that Procrastination is laziness. Now, how many of you have procrastinated many things this year? You are lazy. I'm telling you, you are lazy. Procrastination is what? Laziness. 
Do you know that giving an excuse is a sign of laziness? We finished the major conference. Sunday morning, Sunday night, I was in the Keja. In the Keja church, in the evening. Started the series, part one to four. That Sunday night. Monday morning, I left home 6.30. I was on radio in the morning. From there, I went to office. Hello. And I'm, I'm the pastor. But somebody else will want to sleep. Hello. We want to do what? Sleep. Oh, we have just had a major conference. Let me sleep. I beg you, in the name of God, take your life serious. We can't help you beyond the truth we are telling you. We can't help you beyond the truth we are telling you. I give, 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 so that your book finish. Ah! When you think, say, one don't feel okay, we'll do 24, uh, 24 hours, 24,000, 100 dollars. I don't package, I don't drop up. Then you are hearing 1,000 times more again. Ah! You put it the again. You think, say, after sowing all those kind of cities by sitting at home, Whatever will be, will be. What's gonna be is gonna be. Are you bongo zikwe? That's the lyrics of a song. Go. So somebody said laziness. Excuses are forms of laziness. Procrastination is a form of laziness. Sleep is laziness. Idleness is laziness. Shifting blame, blaming people for what you are going through is laziness. Laziness, laziness. Now I want us to examine some scriptures. So that it will spread the message because I've seen many lazy people. So let's start. We'll do Proverbs. We'll see about five or six scriptures. In let's start on Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. Proverbs 10, 4 and 5. Let's look at a lot of scriptures. He become a poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make rule. What happened to a person that deals with a slack hand? He become poor. So, laziness opens the door of poverty. When you are slack and sluggish, slack and sluggish, slack and sluggish, slack and sluggish, he become it. It's a process. He become it. One day, after eight years, you just discover that you are poor. Hello? I was telling a man we're trying to deal with this case during the conference. And I told him, when you left about six years ago to follow all these false prophets, did I not tell you to think about your life? That this man you are following is a fake prophet. You left a Bible church, a Bible atmosphere, you left biblical principle. You are following fake prophets all over, calling name and phone number. Is that a ministry? Because they took you to South Africa, took you. I said, now you never come back, come misery level now. So now, no house, no nothing. He doesn't even have accommodation. His wife and children, are, they are sending them back to the village. So I said, how old are you? He said, 48. I said, so at age 48. I said, hope you know, say, I never reached 48. I just before you at age 48. Don't you think you should be thinking before you know two years later you are 50? That's how people's life are running. You know, slack hand, slack hand, slack hand. You become a poor that dealer with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maker, you see, age is not equal to money. That you live for 50 years does not mean that by the accumulation of years, the world will just say, you don't do take, take. It doesn't work like that. You can be 70 and poor. Hello? The security man at my gate, my house manager, he did birthday two days ago. And I told my wife to meet him. I said, this man is growing old. Though. We have to make arrangements. I don't expect a man like this to work forever. Let's make arrangements so that we can begin to plan, make sure he could just come and resign one day. Because not too long ago, one of him picking don't marry, another one do graduation, and he be gate man. So, my wife now told me, ah, he's doing birthday. The guy became 62 years ago. He do 60th birthday. I said, man, but why is it about all? So I said, so by their discussion, he now told my wife that he's planning that in two years' time, he's planning to start a business of electronics. So by his money, so indirectly, he will be here for two years. So I now told my wife, I said, this word. I said, let know that is a 60-year-old man at your gate. Planning that at 62. He will start electronics. I said, do you think, I was telling my wife, I said, do you think when he was in secondary school, growing up, it was part of his life plan? By 60, get man in the house of a man, by 62. Do you think that's part of his plan? Many of you, your plan is not to be an agbero. 
Your plan is not to be poor, but you will be poor. Not a cause. Laziness. Laziness. Do you know that what me, your pastor, is doing? Many of you can't do it. Say it's many jobs. Block brain. Many jobs. There are no many jobs anywhere. It's only many mind. Oh, it's back in room. Shit. Money, no, they smell. Shit business is good business. If it's gala you want to sell, if you are ashamed of it, demo, carry yourself, face a papa, my 12 or coco, go ekpe, go sell gala. Wear suit, go to ekpe, sell gala. When you come back, wear your suit, come back to a demo. He's just do the work. If it's pure water, face songo. Go to songo, sell the pure water. Dignity of labor. There are no many jobs anywhere. Hey, I can't do that kind of job. You will enter America, you will be driving taxi. If you can drive taxi in America, why not drive the same taxi in Nigeria with a fizzy? Why not add a fizzy to the dri taxi driving and do it with uniqueness? Hello? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen any recharged car seller with complimentary card? You see, we are not creative. If you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. You see the Holy Spirit, what is my USP? What can I do to make myself special? Do you know if you go to a place to buy the charge card and the guy says, oh, you're welcome, sir. Yeah, we'll sell the charge card. This is my complimentary card. If you need it, you don't need to come. Just text me. I'll send it to you. You can transfer money to me. And he begins to tell you there's easy money, there's clinical money. You can wire it on your phone and it's, ed it's educating you on electronic transfer. Won't you bow? There was a guy that used to do a Canada like that. He's in Canada now with his children, wife and two children. Canada, Loa, or Canada, Longo. He doesn't do all this 20 dollars or Canada. He's chatter to embassies. People that want to go to embassy 4 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m. He has a complimentary card. Call me, he will pick you up by 3 a.m., 4 a.m., face to face VI. 2,000, 3,000. Now, so he pack it, pack it. We are correct guy. He will come. Now, so you remember the guy used to come to. You know the guy now? Used to come to Onis Street when we were in the former office. Now, Canada he did do. Now he's in Canada, wife and two children. He do that Canada or something. Now the same money, Okada. We ask complimentary card. He become a poor that dealer with a slacker, but the hand of the leader what make a reverse wife. He that gathered in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in summer, before you know it. Anything that happens in the street, ask Brother John. He's always around. You become a, a newscaster, a broadcaster of evil news. Ah, may that never be your portion. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. Proverbs 12, 24. The hand of the diligent shall be a root, but the slothful hand shall be under tribute. You'll be a slave. 27, 12, 27. Verse 27. The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Now listen. Listen, you know, I'm about to show you a revelation. The slothful man does what? Roasted not that which he took in hunting. So listen. He stood up. He went out to hunt. Now, will you call that laziness? But that's what the Bible says. Listen. He goes to hunt, but everything he has hunted, he refused to process it. He refused to cook it. So, when you labor, and you are not taking your labor to the next level where it can produce results, you see the useless labor, you are still lazy. Why? Because if you bring something from the field, and you don't roast it, it will sour. It will become spoiled. Your labor is useless. That is why Nigeria is a lazy country. Crude oil, we collect it, but we are not ready to process it. What will it cause us to have refinery in every state? But the corrupt government of Charles have refinery in the Republic of Benin, the refinery in all Equatorial Guinea, they have refinery all over. They will carry it to go and process it and bring back to sell. That you wake up in the morning, hey, sobe, hey, hey, sobe, hey. Doesn't mean you are not lazy, oh. When you are busy doing something and you know that this thing I'm doing is not going to produce the result I need, I need to do something extra. And you refuse to do that extra, you are lazy. That's what he's saying there. He roasted not. He processed it not. Doesn't process. Let me help you to understand for that. If you are doing something and you know that going for masters will make you to succeed and you are not going for masters, you are lazy. 
That's what he's saying, no. If you know that there is another process, I need to take this thing through. That will bring you to another level. But he said, ah, masters, begin do exam again, begin do test, buy textbook, face lecture, ah, I beg, make a remainder as a day. You are lazy. And let me tell you something. If you are sitting down here, you are a master's degree holder. You are already an illiterate. Because BSc is now illiteracy. Master's degree is the new school sat. Master plenty like water now. People have two, three masters and they are still a master over nothing. So you should actually be talking PhD now. Then you, you left school. 19 Boboro. BSc, zoology. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs 19 15. Proverbs 19, verse 15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. What will happen to an idle soul? They will do what? So, when I know you are lazy, I can't give you my money. Even Bible says you will suffer hunger. Welcome you to Calvary Bible Church. Come for an impartation of wisdom. Every Sundays at 10 a.m. and every Wednesdays at 6 p.m. at End of Anjorin Street, Calvary Bus Stop, Idimu Ikotun Road, Idimu Lagos. It is happening in Calvary. Church with a vision. Calvary Bible Church. The turning point. If you have been blessed with today's message and you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you died and rose again for the remissions of my sins. With my heart, I believe unto righteousness. And with my mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Thank you for making me a new creation. I receive grace to walk in the path of righteousness. In Jesus' name, Amen. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Thank you for watching. To order for complete message of Facebook, 